All right, so how does, how does God work this out? How does God bring you and I to the point of, of, um, of being born again, of being saved? Who is involved? What's involved? How do we know for sure? Uh, all of those are relevant questions, and we're going to try to answer some of those questions this evening. First of all, look at John chapter 3, verse number 5. So after Jesus deals with Nicodemus concerning the, uh, the mystery of, of being born again, Jesus goes and he gives some exposition, some explanation concerning how it is that being born again is accomplished. He says in John 3 and 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, and canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, are thou a master of Israel, and you don't know these things? Truly I say unto you, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's the whole formula right there. Let's go back and let's break it down. All right. Look at verse uh, number five. Verse five says, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. Let's pause right there. So that tells us immediately that being born again is going to involve the work of the Holy Spirit, the work of the Spirit of God, the work of baptism. Now, we believe that baptism is an act of obedience, that because God has told us and he has commanded us in his word that we should be baptized, that we have the obligation and the responsibility to fulfill that request of our Lord in obedience to him. However, we also equally believe that we're not saved by works, but instead we are saved by faith. And so as an act of faith in the word of God, we endeavor to be obedient to God, to obey God, and therefore we submit ourselves to baptism. Why and how is baptism significant? That's a good question. Turn to Romans chapter 6 and look at verse number 4. Therefore, we are buried with him in, by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. You hear that? Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism. So when we are baptized, baptism is likened unto the burial of Jesus Christ. He dies, he's placed in the earth, placed in the hall of the earth, three days, three nights. The third day, he is resurrected. We're going to talk about the impact of that in just a few moments here. And so when you and I are baptized, we go down as in a type of death, death to the old. We come up as a type of resurrection, the resurrection of new life. That is symbolized through the act of water baptism. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and uh, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13 says, For by one spirit we all are baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, 
whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Now, 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 this is a lot here. Okay, so let me let me kind of segment this up. Now, in 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 Romans six, Paul is speaking of water baptism. In First Corinthians twelve, he's speaking of spirit baptism. Now, when we talk about the the process of salvation, and it is a process because when you accept Jesus Christ. As Lord and Savior of your life, when you're born again, you are, you are that at that moment you are saved. You're saved from the penalty of sin. But you're also being saved. And one day you and I will be saved from the presence of sin. The three steps involved in this. There is justification. Jesus says to Nicodemus, you must be born again. There's justification. Justification is really a legalistic term. It's a courtroom term. It's a courtroom term. Look at uh, Romans uh, chapter 4. Romans chapter 4 and, and verse 25 says, um, well, let's start at verse 24. But for us also... To whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our what? Justification. Now flip over to Romans 5 and 16. Romans 5 and 16 says, And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto what? Justification. In the Greek, justification is the declaration of an act. So here's what God does through Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ. You and I acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our life. And at that moment, God declares us not guilty. So it's not that you're innocent. It's not that you haven't done anything you shouldn't have done, anything of that nature. But we are justified because God, through Jesus Christ, has declared us. He has spoken to us, spoken over our lives, spoken over our past, spoken over our habits, our hindrances, our hangups, our setbacks. He's spoken over all of that. And he has said that all of those things that that shall not be laid charge unto us so far as eternity is concerned. Now, certainly when a person is saved, they can't just get they can't just stop at justification. That is the act of being declared not guilty. That's also sanctification. This is where the Holy Spirit comes in at now. All right. Now, remember that we just read in First Corinthians twelve and thirteen. For by one Spirit. We, we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So again, I'm still talking about the role of water baptism and the spirit in salvation. Now, so far, we understand justification. Now, not only is there justification, but there's also sanctification. Okay, remember we said that when we become saved, we're saved. But we are also being saved. Now, what does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit sanctifies us. The Holy Spirit sets us apart. To be sanctified means to be set apart. To be set aside for a particular use or purpose. And how does the Holy Spirit accomplish this, being, this, this process of setting us apart? We'll be right back. We're going to go to the next segment.